In this podcast, we're going to talk about hydrates. Specifically, how do we calculate the formula of a hydrate? But before we get to that, let's remind ourselves um, what a hydrate is. A hydrate, as you see over here, see here you see your copper and your SO4. Okay, so that's copper sulfate. All right, and then you see these little water molecules that are bonded to the um, copper sulfate itself. Okay, here's another one. So here's sulfate there, and there's the copper, and then you see all of these water molecules that are coordinated to the copper sulfate complex. Okay, the other thing I wanted to show you, maybe, if I can get it to work. Um, I wanted to show you, remind you about our lab. All right, so in our lab, we took a copper sulfate. Um, it was a hydrate, and it was blue, and we heated it. Okay, all right, so here we have um, the initial mass, which you knew when you started the experiment, and here's our little setup with the crucible and the Bunsen burner. Um, and we're going to put the hydrate inside of the crucible, and we're going to heat it, okay? All right, so here we go. All right, so we're heating it. Okay, now how do you know when to stop? Okay, well, you want to stop when it changes color, right? So change color, we can stop now, and we have our final mass. So we can subtract our final mass um, from the initial mass, and we can determine how much water we lost. So I just wanted to remind you a little about hydrates. All right, now this is what you really wanted to know, how to determine the formula of a hydrate. All right, first you subtract to obtain whatever unknown value you're trying to find. Sometimes they'll tell you how much water was lost and you're looking for um, the salts, or sometimes they'll tell you the value of the salts after it's been heated and so you're looking for the water that was lost. So just find the unknown value. Um, then you're going to convert the mass of the salts to moles. Okay, so you're going to divide by the molar mass of that salt. Thirdly, you're going to convert the mass of water to moles. So you're going to be dividing by the molar mass of water. Then you divide the moles of water by the moles of salt. Okay, and you obtain um, your values for the formula and then you can just write the formula of the hydrate. Alright, so here's an example problem. Uh, you have 15.67 grams of the hydrate, okay, so that's all together, okay, so this is the whole thing, all right, and then you have, um, it's heated, and the water is driven off, and the mass is reduced to 7.58 grams, okay, now this is just the salt now, right, it's the magnesium carbonate salt. Okay, so to find how much water was lost, we would subtract. When we subtract, we get 8.09 grams of H2O. Okay, all right, now we want to take the grams of our salt and convert it to moles of salt. Okay, now to do that, you have to know the molar mass of your MgCO3. Okay, so if you forgot how to do molar mass, here's a little quick reminder. Okay, so you're going to multiply how many you have by the mass from the table. Okay, so magnesium is 24.3, carbon is 12.011, and oxygen is oops, 16. Okay, we get all those values when we multiply across. Okay, and then we add them all up. Alright, so the molar mass of our salt is 84 point, uh, 311. Okay, so 84.311 goes on bottom, one mole on top. That'll get us moles of our salt. So I got 0 0.0902. Okay, now we're going to do the third step. So we're going to take our mass of water. 
okay? And you want the molar mass of water on the bottom. Now remember water is H2O, so if you need a little reminder how to do that. Same way we did the molar mass of the salt. Okay, and then you add those values up. So the molar mass of water is 18.0158. That's an important molar mass. Might be one you might want to just put in your memory bank. Be using it a lot. Okay, you put that on bottom, one mole on top, and you get 0.449. Okay, and the next step, you put the moles of your water over the moles of salt, so you divide, okay, and I got five, okay, so that's how many waters are attached to magnesium carbonate, so your formula, I'm going to write it up here at the top, would be magnesium carbonate attached to five H2Os, okay, All right, let's look at the next one. This one is sort of challenging because it asks you to find the empirical formula and the hydrate formula at one time. So it's a super fun problem. All right, so let's go with what we got so far. So right now we know that we have this much of a hydrate. And when it is massed again, this is the mass. So this would be the salt, right? No water, so it's just the salt. Now you would subtract to find your water. So when we subtract those, I get 0.299 grams of H2O. Okay, now to convert our um, grams of salt to water, we got to know the molar mass of the salt. Now to know the molar mass of the salt, we've got to know the formula of the salt. Well, that's kind of a problem. So we've got this information, the percentage of calcium, sulfur, and oxygen. So essentially, we're going to have to set up a empirical formula problem. Oops. It's just 29.8. Okay. So empirical formula, you want to first convert everyone to moles. Okay, so we'll put the molar mass of calcium on the bottom. All right, and then we'll do the same thing with sulfur. All right, molar mass of sulfur on the bottom. And that gives us 0.755. And then lastly, the oxygen. All right, and we're going to put the molar mass of oxygen on the bottom, which is 16 grams. Okay, that gives us 2.875. Okay, now we have to divide each of these by the smallest, which is 0.744. Okay, so this tells me that the formula is CaSO4. Okay, now we would need to know the molar mass of CaSO4 so that we can find the moles. So we got one Ca. Okay, so all I'm doing is finding the molar mass of calcium sulfate. Alright, so we got 64, 32.06, and 40.08. 
All right, now you add all those together. All right, and you get 137.04 grams. All right, so that number goes on bottom. Okay, so back to the hydrate part. We are putting the molar mass of the salt on the bottom. So we can convert it to moles. And I got 0 0.00413. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it with water. So we got water, our mass of water, molar mass of water on the bottom. I'm going to pretend that you remembered it from the previous slide. So 81.0158. One mole on top gives you the molar mass, or not the molar mass, but the moles of water. Okay, now you do your moles of water divided by the moles of salt, and you get 4. So, your full formula, and I'm going to put it back at the top again, is calcium sulfate attached to four H2Os. So the name of the compound would be calcium sulfate tetrahydrate.